the other sorts of things that you see as the precursor to a party. The barbecue feast out there. Man, it was great just to walk through. Put on weight walking through. It's fun here in New Jersey as they get ready. I think we have to watch more for what Detroit does as they try to adjust their game to the Devils game, change their lineup. For instance, starting right now, Primo and Federoff, two centermen, starting on the same line to begin the game. With Darren McCarty as the other winger, Paul Coffey and Bob Routes are the defensemen. Scott Stevens and Sean Chambers, the defense for New Jersey. They started McLean, Carpenter, and Claude Lemieux. Scott Stevens will be on the ice as he has been throughout the series as much as possible when Fedorov is on the ice. Primo starts at center ice for Detroit. In the previous game, he played with an abdominal problem. He had it frozen before the game. The freezing wore off as the game moved along, and he wasn't nearly as effective. But big Keith Primo wearing number 55. There you see him. He said for tonight's game, he felt better, so he didn't need to visit the doctor prior to the game. Scott Stevens lifts it in, and here's Lemieux, the first one to it. And it's swung away from him by the big goal stick of Mike Vernon. And so Carpenter retreats to play it. So what you were saying about Detroit's style of play tonight sounds a lot more like New Jersey. Exactly. There's a couple of things to watch for with Detroit. They feel that their defense has been just battered. Paul Coffey in particular, he's been hit a lot. So they're changing the pairings of their defensemen. Coffey will not play with Lidstrom. He's going to play with Bob Rouse, if at all possible. The Devils have done a lot of forechecking, skating into the Detroit zone, unstopped. Not, they don't even have to go through people, just moving in and have battered and battered and battered these defensemen for Detroit. So Detroit's going to try and hold them up, not forecheck as much, and maybe try to win a very low-scoring game. Well, that's a radical departure from what sure Detroit is. has done to get here. Oh, to get here, the, the thought was you can't trap what you can't catch. Well, Detroit hasn't been able to skate through these people, so they're trying to adjust. Neil Broughton, but offside. Puck must be ahead of the attacking team over the blue line, as you see the summary of this series so far. Claude Lemieux with a key goal in game one. Final score was 2-1 to one in favor of New Jersey. Scott Niedermeyer with one for all the video highlight reels. Two shots, the second one in, 4-2. And then Claude Lemieux with a scorcher on Mike Vernon. At that time, it was 2-0. It wound up 5-2 New Jersey. So they go for a sweep. And Detroit tries to prevent it and send a game back to Detroit. Game five of the best of seven would be on Monday. Ken Danico matched up with Bruce Driver, two guys who've been with this team since the fall of 1983. Richet moving in. Step on Richet, center, ricochet. The Devils broke through the neutral zone. The place where Detroit was trying to slow them down. Everybody drove to the net, but did it go off a skate? Was it directed in on purpose? I'm sure it will be checked upstairs on the video replay. You see here, Riche on a different line, playing with Broughton, moves in. The puck goes to the front. Broughton is there, and somehow the puck squeezes underneath the right leg of Mike Vernon. First shot on goal, first scoring chance for New Jersey, and it finds its way in behind Mike Vernon. Now here's Riche breaking into the zone. Ramsey's down, Broughton's in front. Does it, yes, does it go off of him, or does it go off to the Red Wing player in the goal crease who is down? That's Bob Airy, number 21. Is it directed in off a skate? Does it go in accidentally? The decision will be made upstairs as to whether the goal will stand or not. Another look at it. There you see Broughton. It goes off the stick of Broughton and through. Can't quite tell. I don't know if it ever made contact with Broughton. I think that will be a goal that will be allowed by what we've been able to see. Video replay has been used 18 times in the prior 80 games of this playoff year. You see the seven occasions in which it is used. One, of course, is to correct the clock, which is, does not deal with a question of goal or no goal. The rest do. And this now we wait. They have a real effect on Detroit. If this is a goal that's allowed to stand by New Jersey, as again, New Jersey will get the lead. And there you see the puck. The question is, is it directed in on purpose off of Broughton and his skate? Does it hit his skate? He was in the crease, yes, but the puck was already there. So that makes that part of it legal. And it does slide underneath the skate and pad of Mike Vernon. Well, this is a tough call. It has to be a conclusive 
call. If it's not conclusive, it will be a goal. This Broughton's already touched it with his with his stick. Mike, well, I don't tough. know. It is real tough. Broughton's skate was behind the pad from that angle, and yeah. so he couldn't see if it the, made the, contact. Yeah, the first time it touched Broughton's blade of his stick, went between his own legs into Vernon. But how did it get in the second time? I think it's a goal, yes. That's a great play by Broughton and a great play by Riche, who was a right winger, went over to the left side of the ice and got the puck, drove into the zone, and it's 1-0 in New Jersey. Neil Broughton, late season acquisition from the Dallas Stars, has now gotten a point in each of the last five games, sixth goal of the playoffs. When he got here, they had thoughts of a second defensive centerman, and the bonus is that he has just brought John McClain on his right side to life. When they were thinking about making a deal to try and acquire somebody for the stretch run, the thought was, let's get somebody like Bobby Carpenter. Bobby Carpenter's played so well defensively, let's get somebody else to help him so he doesn't get tired. So they brought in Neil Broughton from Dallas, and as you mentioned, Mike, he's been just super defensively, yet he's added so much offensively that he's been just a pure bonus for this club. Scotty Bowman had a talk with Bill McCurry, the referee, and was told exactly why the goal was allowed to stand. It's 1-0 New Jersey. Broughton from Riche and Chorsky. And you see how the points are spread about throughout the playoffs. The Devils have used 24 players, two of them goaltenders. Martin Brodeur even has a point, an assist. Chris Terreri, the backup, did not. And the other is Danton Cole, who has just played a little bit on one game. Keith Primo now took a hit from Steven. Mike, the big boys for Detroit trying to play against this big crash line that has dominated physically for New Jersey. One of the Red Wings was just put into the photographer's box on a hit, I believe, by Randy McKay. You know one reason why that happens in this building, and you see it a lot, the boards here are 41 and three-quarter inches high. In Joe Louis Arena in Detroit, they're 48 inches high. A big difference. That's the reason why you always see players get hit, and the leg drive of McKay throws them right into the into the bench where the photographers were, but they're shorter boards here. You see it happen. The reason, Mike, they got another row of seats in, in this building down near the ice surface, and at the ice surface, the seats slid back gradually. So they had to lower the boards so everybody could see. Crucial Niski and McKay are both fine and are both still out there. Crucial Niski 18 in red, McKay 21 in white. Shuttle shot by McCarty was deflected away, driven back around by Sean Chambers. It is Bobby Holik head manning on to McKay. McKay met at the line by Slava Batisov and a centering pass and Holik sent one wide. Crucial Niski on him and boy what a hit attempt by Keith Primo. This is a guy playing hurt. But what a courageous athlete, Keith Primo. Here is Patisov rolling it around. Krusilniski given a bump by Stevens. Oh. Stevens shaken by that. Krusilniski lost his stick and it's dropped. They score! Detroit has tied the game. Fedorov, and it's 1-1. Yeah, the big boys on the ice to match the big boys of New Jersey. And they changed a little quicker. Peluso was still on the ice for the Devils and overskated the puck in behind the goal. Fedorov came off the bench, went to the net, and got the rebound. Look at two on two in the corner. There's Peluso over on the right side going behind the net. He thinks somebody else is going to get the puck. He leaves it. Fedorov shot, save, rebound underneath, and we're tied up at one. Scotty Bowman wanted big players against the big players for New Jersey. And what a fiery shift that was. Both teams were just banging. And Detroit gets their second even strength goal of the series. That's all. Both by Federer. Good point. Play by LaPointe there. He missed the check of Peluso. Federer got in front. We're tied up and won. Boy, Detroit did not will. The decision came down that they were behind 1-0, and right out they came. Big hit attempt by Primo. He didn't get all of the guy that he wanted, but big hit attempt. And then back they come more crunching. Krusiniski really got Scott Stevens. Yeah, I think you're right. I think I think the, the shift was set up with a hard play of Primo. And players follow leadership. And leadership is being shown by Primo. And Detroit is back in the game. Of course, they're only down by one. But mentally, you think maybe that was a pressure, giving up the first goal early. But they've come back. Better off miss for Kozlov. It's taken by Tommy Albaline. Swedish-born defenseman rolling one along. That's handled by Paul Coffey. 
Strauss. No goals by the defense of Detroit in this series. That was not the case against Chicago. Offside. And a little more. A little pushing, a little shoving. Rouse on the ice after suffering a concussion in the last game. And he's paired with Paul Coffey. The Detroit Red Wings don't want Coffey hit in this game. Look at Primo, 55 red explode here. Bang, what a hit that was with Peluso. He has not been able to explode like that since this series began. There's Richet showing some strength on Coffey along the boards. That's what Detroit wants their team to stay away from. Coffey getting hit. Bill Guerin for New Jersey has hit Coffey more times in this series. See what Rouse is doing? Right over to Richet, giving him a message. Coffey gets hit, we're going to try and do something about it. Coffey, if he gets hit a lot, he's not effective. If he has the freedom to express his, his skill level on the ice, he's awesome. The Devils first started play here in 1982, moving from Denver. See the captain, Steve Eiserman. One of the guys you just saw, Ken Danico, was a part of the team in the second year. Steve Eiserman and Sean Burr, not scratched tonight, have been together in Detroit since 1985. Eiserman predated her by a year. Rouse with a shot that's deflected wide. There are three guys who played for New Jersey for the last dozen years. Eiserman with a shot. That one popped high in the air. Down to the ice went Brodeur. Now it's McCarty up with it. Turning with it is Kozlov. Slava Kozlov with a shot deflected in front but picked up now by Broughton. Played for John McClain who's able to step by Kozlov. Trickles it back in. Detroit with seven shots out of the nine that have been taken in this game. So what Scotty Bowman came up with has been working and working solidly. It has so far. I, I'm really admiring the play of Bob Rouse to this point, too. The defenseman number three for Detroit. Out with a concussion early in the first period of game three of this series. Yet he's right back two nights later. Just fighting along and battling away. There's McCarty in front. He's pushed from behind by Danico. And Brodeur actually tripped up and lost an edge there. More on his own than anything else. McCarty's outside the goal crease. Now Brodeur catches his left edge on the ice surface of his skate blade and fell down. Brodeur here has Eisenman to worry about as Detroit's really trying to go to the net. There's great defensive zone coverage. Three red jerseys and three white jerseys all over them. The shot never got through. Here's Danico. Shooting one. Blocked away by Vernon. Might have been tipped by Breland. Kept alive by Driver. Twisting with it is Mike Ramsey. Ramsey's pass is on to Fedorov, and Fedorov cranks it back in. This will be icing if New Jersey gets there first. They do, so it is. That was a nice force play by New Jersey. As Detroit broke out of their zone, they had nowhere to go with the puck. Fedorov had it, and he ends up icing the puck. So it's face-off in the Detroit zone. The last face-off in the Detroit zone, they won the draw. New Jersey didn't got the shot. Now here you see the Detroit moving out of the zone. They're all on one side of the ice. New Jersey will force them over there. Now, if we stop it, you see here three different players on this side of center ice. Fedorov has got nowhere to go with the puck and ends up icing it. Nicholas Lindstrom up with this one. Now they're setting it up again, John. Ralston once more, but then it's lost back to Ramsey. And now Fedorov. Boy, it's just smothering, isn't it? Sent back in by Ralston, who was walled by Fedorov. Vernon sets it up now for Ramsey. Mike Ramsey wrapped it around. Mike Trusilniski took it there. Trusilniski's pass is tipped on back by Garen. Scott Stevens, captain of the Devils, controlling. Nearing the halfway point of the first period of this one all time. Randy McKay slams it back in. It's Batiste off driving it off. Trusilniski rushed. Puck played along by Sean Chambers. Battled for and outletted by Fedorov on to Doug Brown. Lays it over for Petisov. Follow-up comes from Fedorov. Sergei Fedorov wanting to get by. Has to turn away. Devils take over. Javi Holik headmans it on to McKay. Randy McKay out of Michigan Tech. Twisting with it. McKay shovels one and it's spiked to the glass by Mike Vernon. Some heavy hitting. A party emerges with a pass that's tipped but rushed on by Keith Primo. Brimson in neutral ice, and now it's brought on by Peluso. The big men are getting a lot of ice time. Against one another. Both teams, big men on the ice at the same time. 
flip back out for Primo to play. Jammed it on back for Fatisov. Slava Fatisov just curls back with it. Bob Rouse plops it. Niedermeyer there. Bob Airy rushed him, but it's played back up to John McClain. Hitman's a pass on to Broughton, and they rule it offside. And, we have and a, a penalty. penalty is coming up. The Red Wings protest. They'll be shorthanded in this 1 1. Break in. What's strange about the penalty is it happened at the time of the whistle for the offside. Detroit's hockey club very upset that when the whistle sounded, the foul was at that time, and McCreary still made the call. Scotty Bowman was right up at the front of the bench trying to get Bill McCreary's attention. The fans now really into it here as the Devils with four shots so far have not had any sustained offense. Maybe their power play could give that to them. Power play is 3 for 11 in the series for New Jersey. Rouse shoots it back down. The point men, once New Jersey gets it set, will be Driver on the left side and Niedermeyer on the right. Up front they go with Bill Guerin and John McClain, 12 and 15, and Sergei Breland, rookie center out of Moscow, number 18. Driver hacks it back around. Mike Vernon slowed it, cleared along by Coffey. Fed over for Primo. If they hurry, it's a three on two. Rouse just tucks it back in. And a change in lines for the shorthanded Detroit Red Wings. Coffey stays out, joined now by Konstantinov. Brown and Fedorov killing off the penalty. Garrett flipped it in front, but it's taken by Sergei Fedorov and sped right back down. 45 seconds gone on the Devils' power play. Scott Niedermeyer lays it over for Stefan Riche. Riche hit by Ramsey. Aggressive, even in the neutral zone for Detroit. As soon as Riche tried to get skating, Ramsey was right up in his face as Detroit's really trying to hold their blue line. McKay over to Riche. Fire! And a save made by Vernon. Rebound in front. The net dislodged behind. What a rocket by Riche. A man by the name of Claude Ruel he used to be an assistant coach up in Montreal. And was it intimidating for a young player to go and watch them practice on the day of a game? Because all he did was pass the puck hard to his players and tell them to shoot the puck hard. Shoot the puck harder. Even harder than that. And watch Riche. He was a Montreal Canadian then. That shot hit Mike Vernon's left pad, who played the angle beautifully, went down because of a partial screen. But one of the reasons why Riche and Lemieux could shoot the puck like this, I mean, hard and accurate. Riche always seems to hit the net. Lemieux certainly has in the playoffs. And they shoot it hard, and they shoot it harder. And to be in Montreal at that time and watch them go through those drills, and you were a, an opposition player, you were intimidated watching them practice, believe me, especially as an ex goaltender saying it. Well, those two guys are the only two current New Jersey Devils who have a Stanley Cup ring, and they got it in 1986 in Montreal and went through a lot of those drills from Claude Royale. Chambers with a shot that's blocked away by Primo, and Primo makes them go back. Claude is retired up in Montreal, has had problems with a heart condition, but to this day, these players remember those practices and how much it's improved their game. Jacques Lemaire was a player then. Larry Robinson was, and they shoot it. Offside called against New Jersey. Again, Detroit, this is the most aggressive period they've played in the playoffs against New Jersey. The sharpest they've been mentally, killing penalties as you see here to this point. They really haven't given up very much. Sergei Fedorov you saw a moment ago, and then Doug Brown. Red Wings resting at their bench. They got blistered pretty well between the second and third periods of Game 3, and then again when Scotty Bowman went public with what he had told them at the press conference after the loss. Here, Mike, again, Lemieux takes the face off in favor of Bobby Carpenter, who starts at left wing because of that wrist problem he has. You mentioned Lemieux and Riche. Lemieux, the leading goal scorer in the entire playoffs. Riche, the leading point getter on his team. Coffee with a pass on for Fedorov. Both of them are out there right now, but here's Fedorov shorthanded. Sergei Fedorov wanting to get by. Backhander hit the ball. Coffee has shot and went wide. Rebound, Coffee scores! Detroit has gotten a shorthanded goal with two seconds left on the penalty kill. If Fedorov gets you one on one, watch out. He may have trouble with the hitting and the banging and getting through the neutral zone, but if he can isolate you one on one, like this, something happens. There he goes to the outside with the long reach. The sharp edge turn and hits the goal post. And New Jersey never recovered. 
never recovered at all. Puck off the backboards. Coffee had two shots at it and finally ended up scoring. And Detroit leads 2-1 with a shorthanded goal. There's where the Devils had problems. Carpenter and Chambers crisscrossed, lost the puck. Fedorov goes to work. Now, when he shoots the puck here, watch the Devils all go to one side. They're over at one side, and they never recover. The puck is going the Detroit way for the first time, and Coffey gets a big, big go-ahead goal. Coffey, his sixth of the playoffs and first of the series, and the first by a defenseman in this series for Detroit. Brown and Fedorov get the assists at 13.01. Harry is out of the penalty box. The teams are back at full strength. And Cohen Stevens, the defense for New Jersey. The pass fed over for Bill Garrett. Trying to work his way by. Garrett just muscled off enough by Kozlov so that Fetisov can turn from behind. Slava Fetisov picks up reinforcements, gets back across. Trying to move in that time with the point was just great train down, and there'll be a penalty coming up. It'll be against New Jersey, and Detroit, which has just gotten the lead, will now have a power play and a chance to enlarge it. Wings back behind the goal line. That allows Fatisov to head out with the puck from behind the goal, and that led to this play in the New Jersey zone as Danico went up high. And there's the penalty as the point drew it, so Detroit getting the shorthanded goal to get them the 2-1 lead. Now have a power play. And in a good position here. Roughing to Danico at 13.36. Coffey and Lidstrom will work the points on the power play. Iserman and Primo and Cicerelli. A lot of lightning in those sticks up front. The killers for New Jersey. The forwards are McLean and Carpenter. The defensemen, Niedermeyer and Stevens. Primo got there first, got it to Cicerelli, but the pass blocked. Fed to the back to Coffey. Primo. Iserman, shot blocked, taken by Stevens, given on to McLean, and McLean makes them go back. Iserman, a right-handed shot, had to take the pass, turn his body, and take time to get the shot. That allowed Bobby Carpenter to make the real good defensive play in blocking it. To the wing, to the point. Brodeur up with that one, nudged it along, but Fedorov will get there first. Sergei Fedorov, wrapped up by Niedermeyer, and the puck spiked back down the ice. So Vernon Cradle sweeps over for Lidstrom, who has just waltzed to the corner by Broughton. But here they come. Slava Kozlov, eyed up by Driver. And the puck out of play at the photographer's bench. 5.19 to go in the first and 55 seconds remaining to be played on the Devils' minor penalty to Danico. Only one attempted shot so far of any significance by Detroit. Oh, guess what that is? That is the Stanley Cup inside the travel box. When it's handled, the gentlemen that do it put on white gloves. And then they get it out. That's This team right here is just dreaming about it. But I'll tell you, for the first time in this series, Detroit is really standing up for themselves. They've been issued a challenge by their coaching staff. The players weren't happy about it. They were not happy at all about what Mr. Scotty Bowman said about them. But those were the cold, hard facts, the truth. And they've responded so far. Paul Coffey gliding in. Could not fight his way by and lost it. Cleared back out by Brodeur. 35 still left on the minor penalty. The NHL had the Stanley Cup on display over the weekend, and it was supposed to remain at the hotel where it was being shown until Monday afternoon. But the Devils winning the first three forced a little bit of a change. Racing back is McLean, so Vernon has to come out. McLean heads to the bench on a change in lines, and 12 for New Jersey to kill. An excellent job by the Devils. This was one that was necessary for them, and they've been aggressive. They haven't given up a thing. Oh, boy. There will be a penalty. Primo. Brodeur played the puck. Most people would say, that's okay. Primo could go in there because the goaltender had the puck. That's wrong. Goaltenders are not fair game. Primo should have avoided the goaltender. He did not. Now he goes to the box. Voted a little bit on hitting Brodeur. That's a penalty. So De Detroit, who had the power play in a 2-1 lead, couldn't score. New Jersey did a great job. Penalty killing. Have a chance now instead of being down 3-1 on a power play goal. If they get one themselves, they may tie it up in two. Both teams with a goaltender in four for one second. Both teams have had a power play, and both teams have had only 17 seconds of attack time out of two minutes or a little less. 
Now the power play on for New Jersey, their second of the game. They trail in the game 2-1. to one. Broughton has the lone New Jersey goal. Fedorov and Coffey, the goals for Detroit. Long pass on now to Sergei Breland. Hands it across. Moving in is Niedermeyer. Chopped right back off and out again by Chris Draper. Albeline hands on to Riche. Stefan Riche, ever dangerous, took some wax. And fed one right into Draper. Lifted along, and Albeline has to play in neutralite. Niedermeyer again. Took the hit, rolled it around. Konstantinov steps to this. Still battling, can't clear. Pinching his Albeline, brushing it along. Garen drove it behind. Moving into the other corner is Niedermeyer. Took the hit from Brown. Lifted further, pinching again Breland this time. Around behind, and he rams into Ramsey. Devils out man, Bill Guerin. Fed it to the point, but Niedermeyer couldn't stop it. Striding for it is Fedorov. Fedorov got there, could not get by Alvalina, and then recovered to brush one across the goal mouth. Brown with a drive, and Brodeur stopped that one. Fedorov skating like the Fedorov we've seen for a couple of seasons. He is absolutely exploding at any loose puck. Bill Guerin tried to get by, and Coffey said no. Half a minute now for Detroit to kill. Draper up front with Iserman for Detroit. In back, Paul Coffey working with Bob Rouse. McLean and McKay, along with Neil Broughton, the forwards for New Jersey, and it's handed to Broughton, who's in. Save made by Vernon. Driver with a shot. Oh, and Vernon got that one. Iserman lays it back out. It is a two-line pass for Draper, and play is stopped. Fedorov exploding while killing penalties here in the first period. He's, he's over here. He's going to head up and finds a loose puck. He's reading the play, reading the play. Here he'll help as the puck jumps away from the defenseman, and there he goes. When he was a young boy, he was invited to the Red Army team in Moscow. And he learned his trade there. Now, Mike Vernon hasn't had much work. Watch this save on Broughton, a kick save, and then he recovers with Sean Chambers all over him. There's goalie interference that Chambers got away with, and Vernon made a second save. Crowd urged on by the scoreboard responding, hoping that the Devils will do the same to get it tied. Bruce Driver up with it, off the glass. Rouse pursued by Lemieux. Coffey could not finesse McLean, who kicked it along. The jostling continues. Penalty time is now up, and the teams are back at full strength. Driver finesses it back over. Chambers shoots. Goal! by Driver, his defense partner, and he made the pass across. That opened up the ice. Detroit's back deep. See how deep they are? Everybody's back deep. Primo's now coming out of the penalty box. There he is. But that opens up the points. Oh, what a pay play that was. Look at this shot. Rolling puck and everything. Chambers still blasted it. Great shot. Look at Detroit. One man down. Look at the puck on edge. It's hard for a goaltender to find the flight of the puck when it's on edge. It's a knuckleball with velocity. Vernon thinks low shot. He's surprised up high. We're tied up at two. When you're back deep like this, that means the defensemen back here are wide open. Primo will come out of the penalty box as we roll it. And come back. Now we stop it there. Watch the fake shot by Driver and the pass across. Look at these guys all down. That allows Chambers, as we roll it, to get a good, clean shot. Now we stop it again. Man here, man here. vernon has got to think about him. Is the shot going to be low? Chambers surprises everybody. As Vernon goes down, the puck goes up. And we're tied at two. Boy, did Driver make a great play to fake the shot and pass it across to Sean Chambers. Bruce Driver will be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season, whenever the finals are over. Oh, man. He'll be a prime piece of property for some team in the league. Lou Lamorello, 15 years at Providence College as a coach, as well as an athletic director during part of that time. You saw him for just a moment, the general manager of this team, watching nervously 
wanting to be a part of his first Stanley Cup championship squad here in New Jersey. Stevens rolling it back. Konstantinov takes it there. Detroit at one point had outshot New Jersey 7-2. It is now 8-8. Chambers from Driver and McLean at 17-45. Krusiniski to Fetisov. Trickler taken by Stevens and he pulls away. All of the grit and the hitting and the attacking and the strategy of Detroit and we're back even. Stevens worked over pretty well. The tees off crunch McKay. Yeah, he hit him. The Red Wings are keeping coffee off the ice whenever there's big crash lines out there. But tees off and Konstantinov, two big defensemen, are on the ice whenever that big crash line's out there to be able to absorb the punishment. When you've played it one way all year, is one period enough to make a team believers in a brand new system? You wonder about this whole scenario. Detroit's got to feel good about the way they played. They've given it their best shot, yet New Jersey's Last tied them. Play the period. It's an amazing, I think, first period, the way the plays have developed, the way the teams have played. New Jersey, no matter what teams throw at them, they find a way to survive, and they've survived a very good first period by Detroit. Here's Riche throwing it back in. Ramsey back to get that one. Dealt it off to Fetisov with 40 to play in the first. Tommy Albelin stopped that one. And then Niedermeyer. Crash line is off. Chorsky, McLean, and Broughton are on for New Jersey. Chorsky could not get a good shot away because of the defensive work of, of Sergei Fedorov. And it's laid back ahead by Bob Rouse. And swept past Kozlov. Mike Vernon handed it over. Ten to go. Chorsky locks up with Rouse. Iserman came in. And the captain for Detroit is reaped pretty well by Niedermeyer. And one last McLean hit on Kozlov. Kozlov, one of those players that the New Jersey Devil coaching staff said hit, hit, and hit some more. At the end of the period, John McLean hit him hard. This was a very interesting first period. It is Coffee as well as Rouse to start the period for Detroit. Primo working with Martin Lapointe and also Fedorov up front. Danico turned that one along. Sent along by Fedorov, it trickled through for Scott Stevens to play. It is Lemieux and Riche as well as Carpenter, the frontline combination for Jacques Lemaire's New Jersey Devils. Fedorov with a steal, backhander turned aside by Brodeur. Penalty coming up to New Jersey as Detroit starts quickly. So I think they must have fed off of how they played in the first period, discussed it during the intermission, and they start quickly here. LaPointe, oh man, did he catch Danico away from the puck. My goodness. LaPointe, a big forward put on the ice, and Kenny Danico reacted. Primo there took a shot from Scotty Stevens, and you can see that bothered him, or it appeared to bother him, even though he stayed on the ice to start this power play. So That's Kenny Danico, who was absolutely blindsided, and the referee must not have seen that. Danico reacted after and ends up in the penalty box. Kenny Danico is one of the true leaders for this hockey club. In Secaucus, New Jersey, about a mile and a half from here, Max and June McNabb, sitting and watching right now. Max McNabb was a member of this organization for a lot of years and responsible for bringing in people like Kenny Danico and John McLean and Bruce Driver. And I'm sure he's a proud man sitting and watching his Devils go to work. Hoping that they can win their first Stanley Cup, and he won one as a player. He's a member of the Detroit Red Wings of the 1950s. Iserman trying to work it in front, can't do it. Puck taken by Cicerelli. Coffee hurries one, and it's skipped wide of Martin Brodeur on the goal. McLean, but it's kept by Lidstrom. Rolled around Cicerelli there. Oh, was he bumped into by Niedermeyer. Off the rail. It came over to Scott Stevens. Leads it out for Broughton in a shorthanded rush. Rodden back over to Stevens. Quick one in front, and it was behind McClay. Now the Devils have to hustle to get back. Moving ahead with it is Iserman. Testing Stevens. Feeding on over for Cicerelli. Driver bangs into him. Then back to the point. Waiting his coffee. Lindstrom deflected wide by Cicerelli. Slapped down in front and cleared away by Driver. Lindstrom back over to coffee again. Back to Lindstrom once more. Wristed one that slowed down by McClay. Follow-up comes from Iserman, but he's checked. Now it's Bruce Driver, kept at the point. Lidstrom 
gave it up to Broughton, who threw it back down. Over halfway through the Devils penalty kill. It's laid ahead for Fedorov. Fedorov cranks the heart around. Brodeur got a piece of it. Chipped along by Chambers. Coffey kept it alive. Driver swung it back. played second period just one shot on goal this period that by Detroit coffee gliding right ahead Paul coffee wanting to turn by Alvalin here's coffee behind fed it to the point but he saw the shot deflected punched away by Alvalin and played back out by Chorsky a dozen seconds on the Red Wings power play the Devils make another change up front Chambers and Alvalin in back Broughton and McClain the forwards turned aside by Brodeur a check off and better off a shot that saved another shot and Brodeur got that one when you're on the power play you have to outnumber the other team to recover the puck now here's the puck put into the corner it's a two on two play now all of a sudden in comes Primo and his three red jerseys they recover the puck and now you see the chance for the shot Dino Cicerelli in front the puck just misses and Brodeur tried to recover the puck on the last chance here again Detroit this is called a smart dump into the puck and Brodeur does a nice play in kicking it into the corner but again the Red Wings go and outnumber New Jersey recover the puck and there's Brodeur making two saves the thing about Brodeur's goaltending his style never gets him in trouble never he's never out too far even when he's down he's in a position to recover his body al always seems to be squeezed together. Very few pucks slide through his legs or between his arm and his body. He's a, a, a Scotty Bowman as a player to win a Stanley Cup championship as a coach. Al Arbor and Terry Crisp were the earlier two. Conversation, of course, before this final series centered around the teacher and the pupil and the typical things that you would have emerging. But one of the stories was that when Bowman was coaching Lemaire, they won five Stanley Cups, and Lemaire was the only guy who would ask the question, Pow, out in front, oh, the backhander by McKay! It's held off by Vernon. The Devils sneaked an attack through, and Randy McKay, who's been one of the top goal scorers of the series, almost got one. Mike Vernon got Detroit into the finals. Scotty Bowman said, yeah, I'm going to play him, even though we're down 3-0. There's Detroit. Lidstrom makes the pass, and it does not connect. And here comes that counterattack. The Devils find a way to get offense, and Vernon stayed with it. He was partially down, but he stayed with it on McKay as Peluso looked for the rebound. This pass with a rolling puck does not connect, as you see there. Turnover at the blue line. Detroit going in one direction. Now they're caught. Lidstrom gets caught one-on-one, -on -one, and this time Mike Vernon, he wins it. He's had a good second period, as has Brodeur with the score tied at two. Poppy connects with LaPointe, but then it's off him. Stevens nubs one back in. Shots in the period. Six for Detroit. Two for New Jersey. Game tied at two. Lemieux swinging it back ahead, and Paul Coffey just lobs it back in. Stevens back to play. Watch Detroit here with what they call a delayed forecheck. Kozlov's deep. Everybody else is back towards the blue line. They're playing a very similar style in this game that New Jersey uses as their strength. Everybody knows it is the neutral zone trap. And that's one reason I think why we have a goal or a game that's only had one goal apiece with even strength scoring. Kozlov on to LaPointe. Lemieux sends it over for Richet. Coffee recovers. Jacques Lemaire was saying that he's seeing this as a trend now. Of course, New Jersey getting to the finals and being one away from the championship would mean that it would be a trend that would start if it hadn't already. He's noticed it in junior hockey, in the American and international hockey leagues this year, too. I think more than anything else, Mike, it came over here from Europe, where they have large ice surfaces. You can't chase the puck all the time, so you play positional hockey. Here is Lemieux. Held off by Konstantinov, but he got it on to Bill Garrett. Garen watched by Batisov, got it over for Niedermeyer. Swung on in front, no! First lead of the game for New Jersey, and this place is jumping. Look at the 
play as the puck is taken to the outside by Billy Garrett. And in front, Broughton is wide open. A valiant effort by Mike Vernon to keep the puck away, but finally was jammed in. You see, Fatisov's gone down and Bob Airy's gone down. When you leave your feet, you can't recover. There's Vernon with two saves and a third one where the puck just crawls up and over top of his shoulder. Broughton stays with it. The Broughton, he's left alone because Bob Airy had gone down. Save and a save and look at the puck. Crawls up and over, it's 3-2 New Jersey. Broughton with his second of the game. Garen and Niedermeyer, the assists at 7.56. 3-2 in favor of the Devils. Billy Garen with that great speed was able to move into the zone and twist the defenseman Fatisov right down to the ice surface before making the play. The speed he's got, but size he has too. Thrown around behind, Doug Brown can't come up with it. Rushed away from Ralston by Lidstrom. Brown trying to center, but it's off the back of the goal. Bruce Driver moving it back out for New Jersey. Cranks it back in. Vernon just lets it go. Off of Ramsey. Played along to Garen again. Bill Garen crosses. Can't get a shot away. Freeland couldn't reach it. Keith Primo could and brings it on. Now it's Freeland. Chambers with a drive blocked by Mike Ramsey and tucked back out. Chambers just laying it across as Mike Ramsey, member of that 80 U.S. gold medal winning Olympic team, right there, number 15, made a strong block. Detroit started the period quickly. New Jersey is taking it over. They've beaten Vernon now to take the lead, and they haven't stopped since that point. They're carrying the speed of the game now, the Devils are. Here's Detroit backing out. Now they're going to try to force turnovers. Gary with the shoulder on the plane. Rouse takes over on defense. Stevens could not keep. There'll be no icing on this. Once again, Tommy Alvaline shuffles it off the glass, and Rouse waiting for this one. Across to Paul Coffey. Rouse goes the other way to Cicerelli. Offside. Play stopped here, nearing the middle point of our game. The Devils have the lead over the Red Wings, 3-2. And Alvaline angles it back out. John McClain able to pull away. McClain safe on the front, guided away by Vernon. And it's Kozlov in the final 100 seconds of this second period. Bouncer in on Brodeur, and he hangs on. You often notice goaltenders talking to the officials, as Brodeur did during the stoppage of play. Is part of that engaging him to get them on your side, to blow the whistle quickly, for example? Oh, absolutely. And as soon as the puck got into Brodeur's glove on that little play, he, the referee blew the, just blew the whistle immediately. So it worked. Absolutely. I think one thing we've seen in this game is Detroit's really tried to crowd Brodeur, really tried to get him off his game. In fact, Primo took a penalty in the first period, bumping the goaltender. Billy McCreary, as a good referee does, recognizes it. And he wants to blow the whistle to keep players away from engaging the goaltender. Bill McCreary, 11th year in the league. They start with a staff of 59, and by the time you get to the finals, there are only seven officials left, three referees and four linesmen. It's all on merit, and it's an honor to be here. And Bill McCreary knows that. This is the second game of the series that he's worked, also having game one in Detroit. And he does a nice job communicating with the players and coaching staff. That's one of his strengths. So I'm sure he doesn't mind talking to Brodeur. Ahead comes Iserman. Iserman menaced by Driver and just that little flick of the wrist enough to send it away and a two-on-one. Chorsky with McKay. Chorsky with a rising shot that got the glass. Now here's Iserman jamming it back. Second odd man rush for New Jersey the period. Yeah, they, the Red Wings didn't get the puck deep, Mike. You get to the blue line, you've got to get it deep. If you don't, your players are going in the opposite direction and you're dead. Here is Randy. It's a good penalty, too. With 48 seconds to go, he had to do something as McKay broke in. So Konstantinov knocked McKay down, taking away the scoring chance. Two turnovers by the Red Wings in the last minute really hurt them. Look at that pass. McKay lost control for just a moment of the puck. And watch the hook and the pull and knocking off balance 
of McKay by Konstantinov. That sends Konstantinov to the penalty box. If the Devils score here, it's 4-2 with one period to go, and they'd be very tough. Konstantinov had to do something to take the scoring chance away. Twice, Detroit had the puck in the neutral zone, never got it deep to Brodeur's end of the ice, and those turnovers kill him. Just kill him. Absolutely kill him, and it's cost him a penalty here. Here you see Detroit on the puck. On the puck, moving up ice. Get it deep. Get it deep. Nope, it's not deep. Eisenman never got it deep. There's the pass, and it's a two-on-one. Chorsky missed the net. And the next play is the one where Konstantinov took the penalty. Coffey wraps it around. Chambers kept it alive. Freeland there, shoved off by Coffey. Into Riche. Better off reaching for it, but then Breland. Bill McCreary found himself in the middle of that, pinching in his driver, but it's rattled back off. 24 to go in the period. Chambers taking it. Red Wings have made a change up front. They have Draper working up front along with Steve Iserman now, and in back, Rouse and Coffey. To the final dozen of the period. Driver put it in. Coffey back to take it. And it bounced to... Draper to top it back out. And that'll do it. 40 minutes have been played. Only one goal in that period, and that was the tiebreaker, the second of the game by Neil Broughton. Two periods played, and the Devils lead it. It's courage and concentration to be a commissioner in the midst of that mob across the way conducting an interview. Yeah, you can understand the Devils fans and their feelings about this team possibly moving to Nashville, but they're misinformed, Mike. The ownership, led by John McMullen, who owns this team, along with the state of New Jersey, who's Governor uh, uh, Christine Whitman and the Port Authority who run this building, they're the ones that have to make the agreement work. It's nothing to do with the commissioner forcing a move. He's not. He's just trying to do the right thing. These are the people that have to get together and make a strong decision one way or the other. I felt that uh, the commissioner showed some bravery just being there. Before the start of the third period, Joe Micheletti downstairs. He had earlier talked with Ken Danico. Ken Danico, uh, we've played two periods. Now you go into the third period, a one-goal lead. What can we expect from your team in the third? Well, we've got to continue to play like we did the second half of the second period. We got the puck in. We forechecked real well and had numerous opportunities. Uh, unfortunately, not too many went in, but we're up one, and uh, we're going to continue to work hard for the third. You've been here for 13 years the, with New Jersey. It's been a long time. What, what are you thinking right now with one period to go? Well, I'm just worried about that next shift. Uh, Jacques Lemaire has preached focus, and you win the, win the battles against the guy you're playing against. That's all I'm concentrating on right now. Thanks for your time. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Our Bud Ice game summary. Rotten with two goals. Our play for New Jersey is 0 for 2, but it's underway once the period gets underway. The shots are 16-15 New Jersey. A lead after two in the playoffs. Pretty impressive for New Jersey. They've won 10 of 11. Power play begins with a minute and eight seconds showing on the clock at the start of this third. Niedermeyer and Driver will be the point. Rotten working up front with Randy McKay and John McClain. Kozlov as well as Fedorov, the forwards for Detroit's penalty kill. In back, Rouse along with Coffey. Ahead comes Brock, gets to McLean, wedged off. McLean check, puck back to Niedermeyer, to Driver for a shot. It's turned aside by Vernon. Played now by Fedorov and lobbed all the way back down. Not only turned aside by Mike Vernon, but he put the rebound into the corner. That's the goaltender's job, turn the rebound, the puck right into the corner. Half a minute left on the power play. Niedermeyer could not go coast to coast this time. A pass in front is rustled loose by Airy, but kept by Stevens. Fires, and that blocked away by Bob Airy. Stevens again as the Devils come back over the line so that it can be an onside rush. A minute played in the third and 10 seconds left now on the power play. The Devils make another change in lines. Sergey Breland brings it on. Freeland for New Jersey, trying to find an opening, pops it to the corner, Ramsey crosses with Garrett, penalty time up, Ralston tried to center, down to the ice he goes, pulled it in with the glove, and play is stopped. Wings asking right away why there is no penalty call on that, but both teams are going to ask Bill McCreary about non-call the rest of the night, because this is a one-goal game. What an important period this is for Scott Stevens, trying to win the 
Stanley Cup for the first time. Last season, his team was knocked out in a double overtime game against the New York Rangers. Seventh game of the best of seven series. He, to this day, has never watched the tape of that game. Refuses to. It's a bad memory. And ever since this team lost that game, they've been on a mission. Now, maybe, with 18.40 to go, and his team ahead by one, he may be able to watch a lot of tape if his team wins the Cup. Indeed. And yet, after that disheartening loss to the Rangers, they didn't change a thing about what they do or how they went about it. They didn't even change the track. Garen bumped off. Ralston turning with it. Cicerelli on him. And they hardly made changes in players. The big addition of Neil Broughton, and he has two goals in this game, was the key change that this team made on the season. And Tissot puts it around behind, turning with it is Chris Draper. Draper just lobs it back. Scott Stevens hands it over to Chambers. Both teams making a change again. Stevens lays it ahead. Bottle up comes from Lemieux. Shakes one in. Riche after it. Riche carried off by Batiso. Bob Rouse there. Flops it back down again. No icing on this, says Ray Scapinello. The linesman wearing number 29. Puck shot out of play at the timekeeper's table. The puck was rolling down to the Devils' zone, and Kenny Danico tried to time it where he would touch the puck just after the puck went over the goal line. Instead, Ray Scampanello, the fine linesman, was right there on the play, waved it off. So Danico's timing was just off by a hair. He ended up taking the puck and firing it off the glass into the stands. Now Danico will chase the puck back. He can get there a little quicker if he needs to. So finally the referee said no icing. Now he's going to take a hit, put the puck into the stands, and all of a sudden, from what he thought may have been icing in a face-off in the Detroit zone, it becomes a face-off in his own zone. And Detroit has a chance if they win the draw to get some offense. We mentioned earlier that there are three guys who have played together on this team for a dozen years. That's the longest any threesome has been together on one team that's currently in operation in the NHL. McLean and Driver and Danico. They have been through some very lean years. The fortunes of this franchise seemed to change in 1988 when they got to the seventh game of the third round before losing to Boston. Kozlov with a pass ahead. McCarty had it taken by Coffey. Back for Darren McCarty. Checked off. And it's Danico hurrying it for Richie, but instead it's Federoff. Oh Round behind and Tommy Alvaline to play. Alvaline laid it just by Richie and down. Arhita had a clean cut breakaway. He cut in behind where Paul Coffey had been. Coffey's freelancing. He's acting like a rover, rover a little bit. He was deep in the zone. Federoff had covered up and then he moved in. That left it open. And it nearly worked for the breakaway. The crash line is out oh for New boy. Jersey. Better off down. Now he's up. He was banged by McKay, and he's hurting as he gets to the bench. Big he collision just in the neutral zone, Mike. And Federoff's hurting. Play stopped here. Federoff was hunched over as he coasted. How strong is Stefan Riche? When Primo hits people, he explodes on them and knocks them down. This time, Primo went down. Riche stayed on his feet as he was part of the crash line in place of Peluso on that shift. This kid, he Primo, quickly becoming a star in this league, has really put forth a gutty performance here in game four. Lemieux couldn't start away with it. He just throws it back out. It is a collision sport. They often play four times a week, especially this year. You don't get this far without being physically spent and punished. Some way or other, you come up with adrenaline, and Welts may not heal faster, but you don't pay as much attention to them at this time of year. 26 teams started it in January, and now we're down to these two. And the Devils don't change their style. The fans can feel it. Look at the smiles. They can feel it. They saw it happen across the river last year. It's got to be nothing worse than, a, than an opponent that's a direct opponent getting it done. Ranger fans, I'm sure, aren't happy right now. It's like the Devil fans were not last season. It is Driver weaving his way through center. Again, Vernon watches as it comes along near Doug Brown. Muscled behind for Bob Rouse. Kept by Driver. Shoots one that ricocheted to Lemieux. Lemieux to Carpenter. Pad stop Vernon. Reaches a shot, and that blocked by Coffey. 
Bay. Riche getting double shifted, and that's a great vote of confidence by Jacques Lemaire, the head coach of the Devils. Riche getting a lot of ice time here. Vernon with another good save on the offside. And the fans respond once again. Jacques Lemaire has a philosophy. We want to force the man with the puck to make a play before he wants to. And that creates turnovers, it creates offense, it creates good defense. And his team lead 3-2 with 13.51 to go. <laughs> Isn't it marvelous how sports can unite a community? We saw that last weekend in Detroit. Banners hanging all over the city. The city's talk is hockey. The region's talk here in the metropolitan area, particularly in northern New Jersey, is hockey right now. Both teams have done a good job in blocking shots. Ramsey again to Stu Grimson. LaPointe trying to get there, but can't. Wedged by Niedermeyer. Rolled around by Alvaline. Chipped along by Mike Peluso. Packed back in by Ramsey. And into the third row. The right. Detroit system that they employed tonight and tonight only. How do you summarize it now that we've seen it for about 45 minutes or more? Well, during the regular season, they did. They had something called a left wing lock, where the centerman and the right wing would go in deep, Mike, and try and force things. The left winger would stay all the way back, almost up at the blue line, to help the defenseman if the other team came out with a puck. That hasn't worked against the Devils. They haven't been able to forecheck against the Devils. They haven't been able to get through with cause turnovers. So they've decided to try and wait a little bit, be more patient. And so far, knowing it's a one-goal game, it's worked for them. They're in the game. Now time becomes their enemy more than anything else. You may have heard a chant. It was, we want the cup. But coming in is LaPointe. Lost control. Centered one that went off of Brodeur. Now call me a shot. Oh, and Brodeur got a piece of that one. Turnaround play. And it's blocked aside by Bobby Holy. Right, Peluso went off, and the lane opened up over there. And all of a sudden, it was a partial breakaway. That didn't work. Then Coffee had the chance, and Brodeur was there with a big one. A big save. Grimson holding back McKay. Now Niedermeyer can rip it back in. Right on goal. And McKay seemed to be hurt. Is headed to the bench now on a change. Maybe it was just his line coming off. But he was slow to get up and start to the bench after he'd been held down by Grimson. Angled back in. Big scoreboard clock above center ice. Winking in time with the one you see in the upper left. Skipped along now for Ralston. Brian Ralston walking in ahead. And a drive. It's saved by Vernon. Charging to the slot. Now it's Ralston again. Breeland all alone in front. So watch the Devils with their tenacity. That's one loose puck they've gotten to. Watch them continue to work the boards. There's another loose puck. Look at Breland in front. He got rid of his check. And he just turns and 360s the puck in past Mike Vernon. Shot the save. And the Red Wings never recover. Loose pucks. And it's been Detroit trying to battle for them. And here, watch this play by Ralston into Breland. What a beautiful pass, and Breland had time to beat Mike Vernon. Vernon moves across. Breland, as you see, sweeps the puck inside the goalpost. 4-2, Detroit. And you can sense everywhere. They're starting to feel it. Larry Robinson with a two-goal lead. And this team is so good with a lead. They're saying Detroit has not registered a shot this period. They maybe think that Coffey missed the net on Brodeur. Uh, that great opportunity less than a minute before the Devils scored their fourth goal. D 
Did Brodeur make the save? Coffee was in front. Here's the pass. It's it carries out front. He may have missed the net and caught the outside of the goal post. If that's true, Detroit has yet to register a shot in the period. There's 12 14 to go. New Jersey has the two goal lead, and did they work for it? A young man who played last year in Russia, last fall in Albany, New York, with another team that won a championship eventually, the farm team of New Jersey, the Albany River Rats, and now his first career playoff goal, Breland from Ralston and Bill Guerin at 746. Not often in any sport do you see the major league team win a championship and the Devils are close and their farm club win the minor league championship. They did that in the American Hockey League under the tutelage and coaching of Robbie Fatorik, a former NHL player. This organization's deep, they're good, they're well coached, and they now enjoy a two-goal lead. Vernon hands behind. Lindstrom bumped it back off the boards. Kozlov took it there. Gives it back over to Nicholas Lindstrom through to Fedorov. Tied up by Driver. Fedorov with a lot of stutter stops and starts to pass his off copy. Lemieux brings it back. Watch by Lindstrom. He just angles it back in. They made sure he got the puck deep. Now the Devils can make a change. Smart play by Lemieux. Nothing fancy whatsoever. That one flown by Coffee. No icing. Rodor got help from Driver. Dumped along for John McClain. Then over for Chorsky and back down. Detroit trailing by two. New Jersey splendid on the road, particularly with two goal leads that are almost like threes or three and a half. At home, they are good too. But their record shows the dominance that they had on the road in these playoffs with record-setting performance. Here they have the two goal lead. Detroit will see a lot of the trap. They'll try to break it with speed like that. Eiserman trying to get by, chopped at one, and it's scooped up by Brodeur. To follow NHL Network on all your favorite social platforms. That's in games for nothing. That's what they'd like to see. Right now, it's headed that way, but it's 4-2 on the scoreboard, the Devils ahead. Yeah, it's been magical for them, that four spot. Constantine off trying to shake loose, gives over to Iserman. Nine-year captain of the Red Wings, hands it on now for Draper. Punched it around behind. The bear hung by LaPointe, the spin on Stevens, they can't clear. LaPointe stood up by Stevens again. Saw Constantine off in, the defenseman for Detroit will be in on the offense as much as possible now. They have to do anything and everything to try and score. Rodden took the last face off, and when New Jersey moved the puck out of the zone, he went right to the bench in favor of Breland. So Jacques Lemaire trying to do everything possible to be smart here and not make a mistake from the bench to give Detroit life or a chance to score. And now the crash line comes on to meet up with the big boys for Detroit, Crucial Niski. McCarty and Grimson. Boy, you can see the fatigue, can't you? More adrenaline has to be drawn on as we head down the stretch of this one. Larry Robinson really working over on the bench. Scott Stevens massaging his back, talking to him, talking to him. Stevens has to be exhausted. He's played against all the best players throughout the playoffs and has been simply outstanding. And, and Larry Robinson, the coach of the defenseman, just working and working and working and keeping him pumped. Thrown back in by Bobby Holy. Set up by Vernon. Taken by Coffey. Bumped by Riche. Out in front. Backhander by Holy was blocked by Vernon. He's still down. Around behind, it's Riche again. That's why Riche is getting double shifted here a number of times in the third period. Bobby Holy once more, but this time Mike Krusielniski is up with it and starts it up for Detroit. Able to lay it off, wants to get his own pass, spun around, and then a great train hit from behind by Grimson, and there'll be a penalty coming up. It'll be on Detroit. 9.36 to go in the third. The Devils will have a man.
Cicerelli tied up with Alvalade. He missed with a wild slash, and then Grimson came in and just took a shot to the back of the head. You see knocking the helmet off. That's a silly penalty in this stage of the game with 9.36 to go. It just was absolutely unnecessary. Even if the, if the Detroit Red Wings killed off this penalty to Grimson, it knocks two minutes off the clock. 9.36 to go, and Scotty Bowman's team is down by two. Driver over to Niedermeyer. Bruce Driver again, and Niedermeyer once more. John pointed out the difficulty of that penalty because it takes two minutes off the time that Detroit desperately needs. Here's Bill Guerin moving along with it. Guerin shook it back in deep. Chopped at by Coffey, kicked at by Breland. McLean points it to the back. Driver loads the gun, fires the the backboards here act like a trampoline and just ricochet the puck right back in front this morning the Devils worked on their power play and they did a lot of drills where they missed the net on purpose to get the puck out from behind the net in front to somebody open there's McLean gives a good job getting the puck out high the shot is deflected wide McLean's just standing there waiting and he had a stick on the ice Vernon had to go down quickly. He cannot go out towards the man who's shooting the puck now because look how quick the puck comes back off the backboards. So Vernon had to recover by getting himself down and stop the puck that was bouncing on the plane. The puck has jumped around a lot in this game. They have other events here, not only hockey. The Power Rangers, I think, were here yesterday. Detroit, one shot. And we're past the midpoint of the third period. The scoreboard is not urging them on now. They're making a lot of racket that has just started as the Devils try their attack and fail. Kept alive now by Niedermeyer. Quoted by Riche. Mike Ramsey there for Detroit's defense. Riche moving to it. Broughton crunched by Konstantinov. Played again by Broughton. Neil Broughton in some traffic. Flipped it into Konstantinov and he cleared it out of play at the Detroit bench. So again, play stopped. 59 seconds still for Detroit to kill. Detroit has one shorthanded goal in the game, but you can sense here that New Jersey has the two-goal lead looking for what's inside that trunk. And they're not going to take even chances on their power play. They're trying to play it wise, trying to play it smart. That's a beautiful thing there, Mike. That's a beautiful thing. When you consider that you get your name on it, and it stays on it, unlike most trophies that are presented anywhere in any kind of athletic endeavor, your name is on there, and it stays. One thing they did have to do a couple of years ago was to remove one of the rings on it. That ring with a lot of names on it from the 30s and 40s is at the Hockey Hall of Fame. They just needed more room. They didn't want to make that trophy any taller. But it is impressive when it's wheeled out, and it's done with gloves on it. New Jersey looking for the first time that they can get their names on there. And only two of the Devils have ever been on a Stanley Cup champion. Matisov throws a little bit of a scare into Detroit, but the pass went off Bob Airy. 28 seconds on the Devils' power play. Breland banks it back in, and it's burned. Cranked around by Rouse. Kept by Chambers and pitched further. Bill Guerin rolls it along. Taken by John McClain. McClain back to Chambers. Chambers waits. Shovels one that's deflected wide by Guerin. McClain again and back to Chambers. Seven to go on the power play. Stevens nubbed one wide. Bill Guerin goes down. Breland peels off with it. Sergey Breland back to the point. Stevens fires deflected in front. They jam away at it and coming back with it is Breland. Penalty time is up. Thrown to the slot. Chambers and drive. Carbon copy. Second goal in the game by Chambers, both after a Devils power play had just expired. Chambers with a big shot. 
I mean, a rocket. Everybody for Detroit on one side of the ice. Chambers is wide open. And he has one terrific, heavy, hard shot. Vernon beaten high to the catching glove side, exactly where Chambers beat him before. It's a three goal lead, five by the Devils, two by Detroit. And the Cup's going to be theirs. There's 7.28 to go. Detroit's only had one shot in the period. There's nothing there to say that Detroit will come back in this one. Sean Chambers has family back in Detroit, and he has family in Florida. He was traded here by Tampa Bay just around the time that a young son was born. Because of the press of the schedule, he has only had the opportunity to see his newest about three times. He's going to have quite a present to take down to him next time he sees him in Florida after this season. Scotty Bowman has been a part of a lot of championships. Chin extended, still gamely coaching his team here with 7.28 to go. His team trailing one of his former players' teams by three. Scotty coaching without a contract. I hope he's back. I hope he's back. If not with Detroit somewhere, he's an asset to the National Hockey League. Mike, in the first period, Detroit was great. They outshot the Devils early, 7-1. to one. Since that point, the Devils have outshot Detroit 23-9. to nine. They've been just great defensively. They've gotten better as the game has moved along. And they now lead by three. Chance taking time to the second power for Detroit now. They have seven minutes left in which to get three. Darren McCarty. The official scoring of the goal, puck played by a high stick. Chambers from Breland and Guerin at 12.32. The cup is ready. Champagne studio produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Artie Kepner. Executive producers of Fox Sports, Ed Gorin and David Hill. Our associate director all season, Rich Russo. Broadcast associate for the season, Eric Shanks. And our technical crew, wonderfully managed by Bob Muller. Here is Chorsky with a shot that has stopped off. Rebound, and Vernon had some help, and then it comes out in front. Holik to the back. Alvalina shot, that knockdown. Turnaround by Chorsky is blocked. Cicerelli up with it for Detroit. Off a broken stick, it's taken by Chorsky and laid on back to Niedermeyer. Scott Niedermeyer, circle to circle. Alvaline to Holik and it's pitched back. The lead is three. The time is dwindling. Rouse with a pass on to Cicerelli. Back to Rouse once more. Remarkable through all of this is that there have been such heavy rumors of the departure of this team over the last two months. You talk about having focus. John Lemaire and Larry Robinson and all of these athletes. Their commitment and their performance has not wavered at all, despite daily newspaper and broadcast reports about what's going to happen in their future, in the future of their family. The most business-like team in the National Hockey League. Add skill level to it, great talent, well-coached team. It's, it's a wonderful story and how well this hockey club has played throughout the playoffs. You're absolutely right, Mike. Away from all the thought of moving, they've kept focus. Breeland across. Bill Guerin fires a scorcher wide. It's a shot! Jacques Lemaire and Larry Robinson were a part of the Canadians team in the mid-70s. Down to the ice went... Scott Stevens and up with it is McCarty for a shot that's blocked down. And here's Bill Guerin trying to get by Coffey. Locks him up and up. Enough for help to come from Steve Eiserman, who can bring it back for Detroit. That was the last time that a team won the Stanley Cup championship in the American League championship, same organization. Until this year, if the Devils go on to win it. Albany claimed their title a month ago. It is Coffey. Hands it back on for Bob Airy. Across to Cicerelli. And cranked right back in. Driver once more. Matisse off with 420 now to go. Iserman the steal. Iserman in front. Left it behind. Couldn't get a shot away. Ruschelniski peels off to the corner. Around behind for Dino Cicerelli. Ruschelniski couldn't control. Gets it back again though. The battle's still on. New Jersey's playing the trap in front of their own goal now. <laughs> Detroit's getting the puck, but they can't get it through. Five bodies plus the goaltender. Drusiliski with the shot wide. Still only one shot in the period by Detroit. 
one. Not from the lack of effort, from the fact that this the New Jersey Hockey Club is one great hockey club. They can talk about the trap all in one. It's a very talented hockey club with a group of defensemen that's, that's not matched by any team in this league. We will be continuing our coverage through the presentation of the Stanley Cup and the Conn Smythe Trophy. Will it go to Scott Stevens or that man, number 22, Claude Lemieux? Or will it go to Martin Brodeur? Every clearing toss down the ice brings a roar from this crowd. 19,040. The average in the playoffs and the average in the regular season up over 1,500 from last year. Held by Brodeur. And play is stopped. Luso. Mike, you see him all season long. That's expressing what this means to him. Tears of joy from the guy who put the crash into the crash line. And a lot of spirit into the dressing room. His family is here to watch him play tonight. Coming from the range country up in Minnesota where they're so proud of him. He was born in Hibbing, the same place as Bob Dylan and Kevin McHale. Those are the two most famous people. Well, by the end of the night, there'll be a third guy, and he'll have his name engraved on the Stanley Cup later. An emotional guy, and he's the first guy here every day for practice, every day for the games, Mike Peluso. And he'll be one of the last guys to leave tonight. This will be his longest and probably his happiest day ever in hockey. You know, you're, you're known as a scrapper and a fighter, and you wonder if you ever have a chance to play in the National Hockey League. He credits Mike Keenan for giving him a chance to play. You have to try to enjoy the moment. My goodness. It's it just, that's what it means in this sport to be able to win it. You've got some people like Tom Troisky there with a smile. You've got Mike Peluso who can't control his emotions. And you've got Jacques Lemaire with 225. He's still coaching. Constantino. On to Bob Arian back in. The chant is the same one that began in the parking lot at about 1.30 this afternoon. Let's go down. Cicerelli with one that was deflected into the seats by Martin Brodeur and again play stop. This year we've heard so much about lockouts and collective bargaining and hyperbaric chambers and left wing locks and neutral zone traps and boiled flying octopus. There was a great deal of uncertainty about this season but then it came strong. From mid January on wonderful attendances in a number of towns and I think the reason for that is the character of these guys the heritage right, of this right. sport is rural Canada yep. the locker room despite the adding of Europeans and Americans is still rural Canada it's look you in the eye answer the question if you can the down to earth guys that people love the sport unites everyone though it really does Broughton our player of the game he's made a commitment since he was delivered to the Devils been staying in a hotel ever since he got here. That's months ago. His family was in Dallas at the time. They've had to sacrifice, and so is he. But it's worth it when you're in this position. He's never won the Stanley Cup. 24 guys have played for the Devils, and 22 have never tasted this. Mike, every player that dresses for the Devils in each game, they all play a major role. Some teams dress four lines of six defensemen, but the ice time is very different. Some people play a lot, others don't. Everybody plays for the Devils. Everybody's part of this team, and it's a lesson that can be spread around the National Hockey League. Coffee with a shot that is blocked down by Bobby Holik in a three-on-two break. Holik moving in. Nearly got a shot away, and then McCain fired one. Peluso's lines on the ice. I wonder if he can't play because of his emotion level right now. It would not be surprising. No. Congratulations to the New Jersey Devils and their fans and their great staff. This is very well deserved. In the Devils locker room, a newspaper quote had the following passage underlined. We have the heart of a champion. You cannot measure it. You can only feel it. A quote by Akeem Olajuwon of the NBA champion Houston Rockets. 
Well, they're going to have a few quotes in the papers tomorrow. And let's not forget about Detroit, their Red Wings, their coaching staff, and their great hockey city. They battled to get here for the first time in a long time, but they were beaten by a much better hockey club. Much better hockey club. The championship to New Jersey. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. The celebration goes on and some guys who made the winged wheel proud in Detroit this year are in the line to shake hands with the Devils. For Detroit, Paul Coffey leads his hockey club as they stop and a lot of players are hugging. The red jerseys and the white jerseys. And look at Peluso. He can't, he can't drop the arm from his face. He's crying. Fatisov, Scotty Stevens, teammates, even this season before Fatisov was traded. Scotty Niedermeyer will head back to Cranbrook, British Columbia, one of the most beautiful places on earth in the mountains, and just sit back and think about what he did. Something like this comes back to you so often in your lifetime as you see Mike Peluso still brushing away the tears. This time passes so quickly, but yet it seems so long when you recount it years later. Detroit's coaching staff, they too in line to shake hands. Look at that. We will have the Stanley Cup. John McClain. He's been the good, the bad, the ugly. The good is so wonderful. John McClain and Fatisov. There's Lou Lamorello. There's Jacques Lemaire. The stability came two falls ago with Lemaire and Robinson. Then a system, and then rejoicing. Let's check in downstairs. Okay, here we are with Scott Stevens. You know, Scott, a year ago you were signed with St. Louis. You looked pretty happy to be going there. Here you are, standing captain of the Stanley Cup winning New Jersey Devils. How's it feel? It's unbelievable. It hasn't sunk in yet. Uh, I can't believe it. These guys work so hard. It's unbelievable. Unfortunately, you're on a great team. Well, you know, you can talk about the steps up the ladder that this hockey club took to get here. Can you explain a little bit about what it took to get here for this franchise? A lot of adversity, and we stuck it out. We believed in each other, and we played for each other, and that's why we won. Now, you get a chance to go home now. You've been on the road. How happy are you to go home as a winner? Well, it was a big motivation factor. Those guys are away from their families and kids that were just born. We want to win the game tonight, and we want to go home and enjoy ourselves. Well, thanks an awful lot, Scott. Congratulations. We're going to throw it to Mike Emmerich up top. Thank thanks a lot. Good boy. Earlier, Scott Stevens said in this playoff series, you have to have fun, or you'll be eaten alive by the pressure. The fun has begun. We'll be back with a Con Smythe presentation, too, in just a moment.
presentations of the Stanley Cup, the dream of guys like Neil Broughton, who does have a gold medal from the 80 Olympics. They asked him how that would compare with the Stanley Cup, and he said, wait till I win it, and then I'll tell you. Well, hopefully we'll hear from him before all this is done. They are bringing the Conn Smythe Trophy out now. That is awarded annually to the player judged to be most valuable to his team in the playoffs. Last season, Brian Leach of the New York Rangers won that award. Larry Robinson, the assistant coach with New Jersey, has won the award. It's a very special, special award to be your best player at the biggest time of the season. And nice to see Mike Peluso's caught himself. Yeah. <laughs> Martin Brodeur, his father's on the ice. His dad's one of the photographers here in this game. The Conn Trophy is awarded to the most valuable player in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It goes to Claude Lemieux. Claude Lemieux started the playoffs against the Boston Bruins. He knew his assignment was going to be going against a great player, Cam Neely. He said he had nightmares before the series started, just thinking about it. Now look at this, and is he appreciated by his teammates? Claude Lemieux, one of the great characters of the game, one of the hated figures by opposition fans because he's pesky, and he has been a prolific scorer in these playoffs, and he gets the trophy now from the league commissioner, Gary Bettman, and shares it with the fans. Maybe next year, Coaches on other teams will have to worry about Lemieux instead of having Lemieux worry about the other players. He is a terrific big-time performer and has been all throughout his NHL career. Look at the, the tears and what it means to him. Oh, my goodness. He has a brother back in Quebec. His brother has been limited since birth. He has dedicated a number of things in his life to his brother, who's very near him in age. And I'm sure this is one of them. Has another brother who played in the NHL for some time, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Stanley Cup. <laughs> the Devils' amazing playoff run has taken the term teamwork to a new level. Congratulations to the Devils, John McMullen, Lou Lamorello, Jock Lemaire, and the players. Scott Stevens, this is for you. It goes to the captain. Then there are handoffs during a skate around the ice. We'll just let you watch and listen. John McClain, Bruce Driver, and Ken Danico, the three senior guys on the franchise who have been with an awful lot of the frustrating early years of this team, now are the first beyond the captain to get to raise it high. Kenny Danico injured his knee earlier in the season. That's the main reason they made the trade to get Sean Chambers. They thought he was done for the season. Danico defied the odds. Made it back and was significant in helping his team become the champions they are. stretch that sometimes lasts two months 
of battles and wars and battles and wars. And this is the result. It's not about money. It's about championships. It's about team play. And he is like the father to this club. And I think he's enjoying just sitting and watching his team celebrate as he once was a player doing the same thing. Talking about head coach Jacques Lemaire. You know, Bobby Carpenter's in there. He was holding the cup up. It wasn't long ago Bobby Carpenter was playing with the Boston Bruins and fell into the boards and shattered his kneecap. He wasn't sure if he'd have a future in hockey. He now has a championship. Dave Maloney has the Conn Smythe winner alongside, Dave. Well, here we are with the Conn Smythe winners. Mike Emery suggests, Claude, you've been a big game player your whole career. I want to tell you, this has been a big run for you. Does it get any better than that? Well, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my teammates. I can't believe that I won the Conn Smythe trophy, but... You know, I played well, but the guys played unbelievable. And the guys that came up big for us tonight, what an incredible feeling. Chambers, Broth, and, you know, Braylon. This is what our team is all about, and it's just an incredible feeling. Well, can you compare? You know, you won a cup with Montreal. Can you compare these two wins at all? This is so different. I can appreciate every moment of it because in 86, it was like a dream came true that it happened so fast. And now I'm going to enjoy this one. It took me nine years to get it back. Can you speak a little bit about the significance of Jacques Lemaire? You know, New Jersey Devil, Jacques Lemaire, you know, that's what it's all about. The minute that he came here, this team was a new team. And we believe in him. We believe in his system. And we got a cup for him. And I think he'll be the happiest man ever. Well, congratulations. Enjoy your offseason. Thank Thanks you. for coming. We're going back to Mike Emmerich. Thank you. David, thank you very much. Some more carrying of the cup and now taking it over near the glass where some of the fans can see it better. And a tribute to the New Jersey fans. So often there have been cases where fans have wound up going onto the ice in situations like this. This is a player's moment. And congratulations to those fans. They've recognized it as that. They're enjoying it too. But they're staying away from this special moment for the players. Joe Micheletti is downstairs with Detroit coach Scotty Bowman. Scotty, you had a heck of a year, but you came up a little short. What happened in the finals? Well, I think we got behind. You know, we lost a couple of real tough games at home, and then uh, we really uh, ran into a team that was at the top of their game. Uh, they're a big, strong team. Uh, they really uh, know how to play good defense, and when you do that, you're going to win a lot of games, and they won a championship, and they deserved it. Your contract expired in June. Can we expect you to be coaching next year? Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem uh, working out a contract with uh, the Detroit Red Wings. I just said I, all along that I would sit down after the season. You know, they have some priorities to check with uh, my family, my health, and make sure that everything's okay. But I enjoyed the year. Our team really put out. You know, we, we, we got close to the top, but we didn't get to the top. Scotty, thanks for your time. Mike, let's go back up to Sarah to you. On a night that was not good news for Detroit, Scotty Bowman's return and willingness to work something out, hopefully, is good news for Detroit. The celebration goes on. Jacques Lemaire holding the cup.